Welcome to today's training video. In today's training, we're going to teach you all about volumetric calculations. As you can see, we have a traditional GNSA system at hand, and that's exactly what we'll be using to calculate our volumes of the different stockpiles in the surrounding area. So, how exactly do you calculate a volume of a stockpile? So, we're going to first measure the bottom of the stockpile, then try and get some middle shots and migrate to the top embankment or the top face of the volumetric structure. Remember, when you want to do a volumetric calculation, you want to recreate what you see on the terrain or on site in the office. So when you look at a stockpile to be measured, to have it as accurate as possible, you need to measure the small ditches, the small embankments to get your 3D model as accurate as possible so that when you do the triangulation, your volume is actually represented what is on site. So let's look at the setup that we have on site. As you can see, we have a rover and we have a base. The method of how we want the base and rover to communicate is via entrap. So we'll create our base station as our own personal local entrap station. What we'll do is we'll first go to our Wi-Fi. The base will automatically output a Wi-Fi position. We'll click on our base. If you have not yet typed in your password, the password is Mlet Reach, all in small letters. As you can see, the device is currently connected and we can now go over to the app. So we'll click on the Emlet Flow, wait for it to load up. As you can see, my RS2 Plus base, some base is actually appearing. I'll go to my base output method and as you can see, my entrap method is already selected. So I'll just click on the pencil and make sure that I am actually on the correct mount point. Okay, so in this case it's MP3233B. Alright, so for my base and rover to actually communicate, the same mount point that I use on my base needs to be used on my rover as well. So let's connect to my rover. As you can see, we are now connected to our reach rover on our RS2 receiver and we would just want to go to the correction input settings. We can see that the caster entrap is already selected and we can just confirm that the mount point is actually 100% correct. So as I can see here, my mount point is MP3233B, which is exactly the same as what my base is on. And that is why we can see on the top right hand side of the corner, there is actually a fix pulling through between my base and rover. Now that we know that we have a fix, let's get down to the job. The first thing we want to do is click on the survey tab. We want to create a new project. We're just going to call this quarry one. Okay, the author is not important for now. And then if I had additional codes, I could have loaded them there. We are in RTBC 94 WG29. So I'm going to select that. And my linear units obviously is meters. All right. Then I'll start to measure my points at the bottom embankment going to the top as well. So very important to see is if I measure a point at the bottom embankment and I measure a point at the top embankment and I draw a straight line in the office with my triangulation, I would miss a whole lot of volumes. And in fact, I would make this volume to be much more, much larger than what it actually represents on site. So you want to get this slope gradually as it moves to the top as best as physically possible. So I'll take a shot here, maybe let's say at one quarter, two quarters, and then I can see it's pretty uh, straightforward going to the top and I'll just take another measurement at the top. So very important to look at your embankments when doing a stockpile measurement. If your embankment is slow and stepping up and you just take a bottom and a top measurement, you always have errors when you calculate your volumes. So try to follow the terrain as best as physically possible. And you can do this in your own method. You can do it, walk all the bottoms first, then walk the middle sections, or then walk the top sections. It will all depend on the amount and the size of the stockpile that you're actually measuring. So for this case, I'll measure the bottom, I'll migrate to the top, 
and I'll, let's say, give myself maybe a, a five meter change and I'll come down exactly the same way. And I'll do this for the entire stockpile. So let's start with surveying some points. My first point, I will give it a description as BB, which is also known as a bottom bank. I'll level my GPS receiver and just make sure that it's saved. I, you can automatically see that my next point will be point two. And then I think this will be a typical SS, which is a spot shot. And then I'll have another spot shot over here. Very important to not push the GPS receiver into the, the, the stockpile. And then I'll walk to my top embankment. And I'll call this top bank. I'll give it about five meters. And I'll start with the top bank again. As you can see, it would actually be dangerous for me to get up to the stockpile. So I'll just get up let's say midway and I'll measure another spot shot from the top down. I'll just push the rod down and take the, bo the sh bottom shot before I measure my top shot again. So let's do that and we'll continue. As you can see, we're done measuring this stockpile behind us. So let's take the data into the office and measure exactly how much cubes is in this stockpile. 